Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Kimberlea and this is my fiance, <laughs> Jonathan. We did Hi. get engaged since our last video, uh -huh. so that is new. Uh, we wanna jump right in from part one and if you're just joining us, you may wanna go back and watch part one so you understand why we even started this IVF journey. Also, John, we'll talk more this time. The last video was on purpose, have me leading it because it was about my body and the initial process that was involved, except for the sperm part. Uh, yeah, very knowledgeable in that department. Yeah, that was, that was all him. We'll also be answering all the rest of your questions that we got, and thanks to everyone who participated in that. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. I will leave our links below, and I do have a little broadcast channel where I do voice messages, updates, texts, polls. It's a lot of fun. When we left off, we were about to start the injections. We gave you a little sneak peek of all that fun, but it was the beginning of June of last year, and June 7th was my birthday, and John planned a getaway for us, a surprise getaway at Joshua Tree, thinking that we wouldn't be starting the injections until the 9th, but it ended up that I got my period early, and that is when you have to start the injections because we were doing what is known as the follicular cycle, and this is when they try to mirror your actual cycle. So they're trying to get you to do the injections for the two weeks before your ovulation. You're gonna learn this if you're in the process as well, but you'll be taking injections every day to stimulate your follicles for 10 to 14 days, and they'll be monitoring you that entire time because that's when you will release your egg during ovulation. That's what they're trying to do and collect. And your doctor's gonna choose what kind of start you do. There are several different ways to start the IVF process, but we were going with the follicular start, and my doctor prescribed a 10-day regimen. We also unboxed the medications in the last video, showed you what we got, but I did want to take a moment and I told you I want to tell them exactly what medications I got because I got a lot of DMs and questions, even emails about like exactly what my medications were. But I will say you'd probably want to watch till the end of this video before you even care about that because you're going to have your own prescription. Your doctor is going to give you the details that you need. But I will leave everything below and I was taking estrogen in the morning and at night in the form of a pill. The day after the injections came, we went to an appointment that morning, that was June 6th, and we got the final count of what they saw, and they saw eight follicles. That wasn't much, but mm -hmm. I hadn't been stimulated yet. So this was the night before our trip. Well, like we said before, she saw an Instagram post from somebody and showed it to me. I was like, I wanna have photos with cactus and boots. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, let's go do this. This will be fun to have a photo shoot in Joshua Tree with cactus and But the some boots new didn't boots. come. The, that's right, the boots didn't come. And he didn't want me to know what was the oh surprise. God, right. But then he was like running around town in the midst of everything else we were trying to plan and he went and got new boots. I got new boots, better boots actually. Two pairs that were yeah. super cute. We're gonna be showing you all these pictures. And then it just so happens to be this wasn't planned because you didn't know this, but it was my birthday and my favorite snack is- Oh yeah, Cheez-Its. And it just happened to be that there was an event going on for Cheez-Its where they transformed a <laughs> gas station really cool. into a big event for Cheez-Its. Like you could put a bag under the gas pump yeah. and it would be Cheez-Its. So anyway, we had to do that. And all of this was happening in one day. We only had one day to spend. And then at our Airbnb, the day of, I guess there was a car accident or something. Somebody had hit a telephone pole. It exactly. was knocked out. We can see it yards down. I took a photo of it. It's right here. Yeah, and then we lost power for half the day. But that's All okay. power. Like, not half a day. That yeah. happened. We were in the middle of the desert. So this is, like, a little bit scary because there was no internet, yeah. no phones. Yeah. And we had a bunch of knives on our bedside because we were scared in the middle of the night because we were like, somebody could come in here. She was scared in the middle of the I night. I was, and I, I even took a picture of the knives. I'll show you. We had nothing. We, And it was a little bit, like, freaky. She made me take all the knives and put them into our bedroom. So, in case somebody I was like, what if in. they come in and they grab a knife, you know? It's so not like, funny. It's, yeah, no, anything's it possible. It anything's is. Possible. Anything's possible. And, you know, like, they could, they could be watching us. It's miles and miles away from anything. That sounds like a movie. It does. I felt like we were, it was like very quiet. Yeah. 
But it was really cool, and I Very highly cool. recommend the location. I put it in the last video as well, but I will link it below. And then the next day, we had to drive back. It was my birthday, and we had to start injections that night. Mm -hmm. And one of you asked, were you together for most of the steps? Because they did this during COVID. So, yeah, so John was with me through all of it, thankfully, and he wanted to be involved, which was really good. And he was at every appointment, and he was much more involved when we began the injections. <laughs> because how did we learn how to do them? We had to prepare the injections, mix the injections, learn about, like, the saline and how it mixes in and what a syringe is and what a needle is and oh, yeah. the different gauges of different needles. I had never— prepared injections before mixed medicine. So Me that neither. was pretty interesting seeing what, you know, I guess nurses do that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, pretty cool. And I was very scared. I don't like needles. So after this entire process, I feel completely different because now I've got, I have kind of got used to doing it. But Talk about being scared. We got home and it <laughs> needed to immediately get prepped, everything. Right. And... She's down on the couch. I'm ready to go. I have my syringes. I'm like, all right, baby, let's do this. Wait, hold on. I'm not ready. Okay. What do you need? Just give me a moment. Okay. <laughs> a moment. Fine. <laughs> Three hours go by. Yeah. We finally put on spa music. We dimmed the lights. We lit some candles. Three hours until yeah. I could finally inject her. Oh That's my not an gosh. exaggeration. I wrote a note to the doctor like the next day. I can put it up on the screen. And I was like, you know, m maybe some people feel like, I'm a baby for it, but I just have to let you know, it's it's an experience because you're not only, <laughs> you know, it hurts. It's not, it doesn't feel pleasurable, but then also you're trusting someone to do it. Not that I didn't trust you, but I've totally. never had someone else except for a medical professional inject me with a needle. So you're going to see all this because we do have videos of it. But at that point, I was given the estrogen. I had to take them day and night. And that just helps this whole process. It helps thickening your lining of your uterus. And then I had to start Clomid the same time I did my injections. And that actually helps with the overall ovarian stimulation because it releases the follicle-stimulating hormone. And that's what this whole process is trying to achieve. Oh, and then it turns it into super ovulation because what you're going to try to do is get more eggs. What do you think the worst medicine was for you? Well, let me give them a list because I definitely know what what medicine I don't like. And you know, too. I sure do. But we had the following regimen. We were doing Omnitrope. We had different names for these. We, we called them different things because we couldn't pronounce them. But we had Ganorelix, Menopure, Folistim, and Leprolide, and Novarel. I'm leaving them on the screen and below so that... You can see exactly what these medications are, but like I said, watch till the end. And each one of the medications do something different. So it's also important you pick a time. You kind of have to do it the same time every night. We didn't do that. It was one of the things that we thought about later, but you should be pretty consistent. So the Omnitrope is one of the most important ones because that is for egg quality. So if you are older and doing this, it's worth it. It is an expensive medication, but I already gave you the price of how much all of these cost in the first video. It was like over $5,000. But that one helps with the egg quality. And so this was necessary for me. By egg quality, like that's just talking about like the container the egg is in. Right, like the shell, the kid, the like if it's like because it deteriorates over time. Right. So if you're older, they highly recommend like it as a necessity. And then the other one was Folistim. That was the cartridge pen that we had, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's stimulating your follicles. I liked the Folistim one because it was very simple to use. You just crank the dial, gives you the amount needed, and the needle was very sharp and very small. Small. That one was... But <laughs> when he asked me, like, you know, which ones I don't like, that one stings, though. Mm -hmm. It's it's the second worst one. It's not the worst one, but it comes in second as being the worst one. And those two need to be refrigerated. The Omnitrope and the Folistim need to be refrigerated. And the Folistim hopefully will increase the number of follicles you have. So that's good. They told us at this point, they estimated that we would maybe get five what I learned about the follicles is, I guess there can be as many follicles growing as your body allows, but the problem is they won't stop growing, and that causes a problem. But the doctors will need to monitor how 
large they're growing and then stop it once they we get did to do a certain, that. right? Yeah, we had to take a med. I had to take a medicine to like stop the stimulation because they're monitoring every day. So if they're getting, if they're growing too fast and they need to stop it because there's also like a fatal thing that can happen to you right. when you overstimulate them. We'll get to that too because then they had to give us a med so that it wouldn't keep going. And that sort of dictates how many eggs you're going to get because if right. you have eight and only two of them get to that marker where they're too large maybe the other ones might not produce eggs but then you have to stop so the other ones can't grow exactly there's no chance for the other ones to grow because they grow at different rates like i'm going to put it up on the screen they gave us a chart so that we could see over the course of our injections where the follicles like how big they were and they all have to get to like an 18 or a 20 yeah and if they go further than that that's not good and it's got to be it's very it's a very delicate process <laughs> it's stressful but the menopure stimulates the follicles as well to release the egg. And so all these things do a different thing. And the menopure was the worst one. That was the one where it comes in a powder form and he would mix the saline solution with the powder. And I had two jars of the powder. So that was kind of more intense because you have a lot of medicine going into your body. That one hurt so bad. And what was crazy is that was the first one I tried to do yeah. the first night. So I thought they were all going to feel like that. So that really just psyched me out. I was like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to do it. That one also requires more work. One, you have to mix the solution into the Dilouette. I like Dilu that word. Dilouette? Dilouette. Dilouette? Dilouette. Dilouette. Dilouette? Dilouette. Dilouette. We're probably saying this wrong. Dilouette. Um, Anyways, you can't shake it, but you have to mix it properly. You have to kind of if it starts, agitate it. If it starts bubbling, then it's not going to work properly if you do that. Plus, you get air in the syringe. You don't want to inject that. So there are these things called Q-caps. You're going to learn this if you're doing this process. But that one has this thing called a Q-cap. And on top of it, the syringe kind of sits in it. So you can, you're going to see him doing it right here. But you can stir it back and forth with the syringe on there. Yeah. So it kind of makes it easier, but that is more of a process. He was really confident about doing the injections. You seemed. Oh, I was very confident. But you, but you didn't like hurting me because that, no. that hurt. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's the one thing I can say is he felt bad every time he had to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I was just scared that there would be bubbles in it or an air bubble, but I actually found out that's not as dangerous as people think. Like, it just won't make the medicine work as well. I thought I was going to die. Like, before I ever did this, I thought if you had a bubble in there, you know how you, like, it's tap like it. It's like it goes into your bloodstream, right? It's it's rare. They, they told us not to worry too much about it, but you have to inject on the on your stomach, on the lower portion of your stomach, kind of between your hips, you pinch the skin. We're going to show it to you on screen. Pinching the skin pulls it away from your body, so you're not feeling it as much. And we're going to show you this whole process, like I said, but I was so scared. So the things that he said helped me were I dimmed the lights in our condo. I found a comfy place on the couch to lie down, put the candles on, the babbling brook noises or the spa music. I was like, I can't do it here because she's going to, I have Alexa here right now. She's going to say something, but I would be like, Alexa, play babbling brook noises. Um, but that was really important for me. <laughs> So I feel like I was in a spa. I think I said it low enough. She didn't hear me. She's blinking. Alexa, stop. But the one thing I will recommend that like it was a game changer for me is I got an ice roller on Amazon. I'm going to link it below. Game changer. Yeah. It helped so much. So you're just going to rub it on the area that you're going to inject. It kind of numbs it. And then it just makes it so much more comfortable. So you're definitely going to need that. Also, I like that you would count down like three, two, one, and then do the injection. I like that. I don't like to be surprised. Always go on two? <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> and here's a funny video. And I might have to blur where the needle goes in because you know how YouTube is. They don't like anything that's weird. But I just wanted to warn you that we don't take things too seriously. We think humor is really important. So when you watch this, you might think like, wow, they're just being so goofy and funny. But it's not really rocket science. We knew what we were doing. You learn it once. It's the same thing over and over. Yeah, and that's how we got through it, is just like having fun. But let's show the videos. Okay, so he's gonna take the cap off of this thing. And then he's gonna put the small needle. Did you use the big needle last night on accident? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> if you did, I didn't notice, but right. how would I know? 
And then we're gonna put the little needle on there. And he's got it. You gotta make sure all the baby. You're not supposed to open them with your mouth. Your mouth has bacteria in it. <laughs> don't follow. Don't follow this. Um, don't follow this example. But baby, for real, did you get the bubbles out? I didn't even see you. I'm not gonna, I haven't done it yet. Oh. Okay, then he has to get the bubbles out. And then it needs to squirt up the top, which is actually a thing. I used to think that was like some weird thing they did in movies where it squirts out the top. <laughs> yeah, and now I know it does squirt out the top to make sure that it's cleared and you have only liquid. Okay. Ready? <sighs> no. I'm not, but let me just see. Okay, now I have to pick a spot on my belly. Um, we already did where? Like there is yeah. one. I did and like there's one. Here and here. So. Yeah. Ready? No, baby, I'm not. Okay, let me know. Okay, where are you gonna go? Show me where you're gonna go. Okay, baby. Okay. Three. Two, one. Oh, why'd that take so long? Holy shit. It's hard to push this down. Why? I don't know. Is it always hard? Yeah. I was like, what is he doing? I could do it faster. I no, don't I don't know if you're supposed like, to. to do yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you should do it fast. Yeah. Ow, this is the burning part. Nice job, baby. Oh, you're welcome. You're I mean, thank you. So this is just, it hurts right here right now, but it just burns inside your skin. It's nothing you can do on the outside because it has to do with the inside. So it's like, you know, it's like it takes up at least like 45 minutes of our night or an hour of our night because i going to mix everything and then I'm not always feeling up to it. Oh, thank you, baby. I love you. Thanks nice for job. helping me. Uh, nice job on you too. Yeah, okay. You have right. to do so much. It's not fun. <laughs> I know. It's hard on him. He's not a nurse. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I don't like, like. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, go. And three, two, one. Ow. Ow. And Ow! So somebody asked if it's as painful as they've heard and I'm gonna say yes, it was for me, but as I stated, I got used to it. I was just gonna come on and say I've been searching for IVF videos all day today, and I'm surprised that most people just, I don't know if they're pretending, I don't know if they just have a different pain tolerance. I've always felt like I have a pretty good pain tolerance, but it's like everyone makes it seem like this doesn't hurt at all, and the truth is it freaking hurts. I don't know how people don't think it hurts but it hurts. So um, I was looking for some encouragement, but every video I watch is just like, oh, easy peasy, this was so fun. And I'm like, what, what? It took me three hours last night, like, no. But uh, there's no like marks or anything on my stomach other than like a tiny, tiny dot like that. But um, it's what's inside that hurts. It's not the actual needle. It's the solution. It just burns the inside of your stomach. And another thing is, this is a little secret. We're not doctors, so we're not giving you medical advice. But after a while, we realized that we were doing all these injections at the same time. So I think we're doing three injections at this point. And we started thinking, why don't we just put them into one syringe, you know, suck them out of the ones they're in, put them in one syringe, and then just have one injection. 
Well, at this time, we didn't know how to do that in the follow sim because it's like a cartridge. We're going to show it on the screen. So we left that one as is. Plus, it wasn't that bad. But the other ones, just going to tell you, we, I'm not going to tell you how to do this because you need to just like do your own research. But we were able to minimize the times I was getting an injection by mixing two of them together. So you can learn how to do it for yourself. To each their own. Everyone has their own threshold for pain. So what seems painful to her might not for somebody else. Right. It's not really the pain of the needle. It's when you have to inject the actual medication, it starts stinging inside. It goes mm -hmm. away in a couple minutes, but there are, like the Menopure one can last like 30 minutes and you still feel it on your skin and it gets all red and irritated. So you just never know. Plus the bruising happens. So you have to switch the area you do it in. So I started like at the far end of my stomach and would go in every day so that we would get like that whole side and then go the other side. But all that goes away as well. Like there's no scarring no. or any rough tissue from doing these maneuvers. No, it was fine. And then we were getting ultrasounds almost every other day. So we started the injections the night of June 6th, and then we went in on June 9th for my first ultrasound to see where my follicles were. And then we went on June 12th, and then again on June 14th, and then on the 16th, and then on the 17th, because my retrieval was on the 20th. So they had to make sure that everything was progressing as it should. Most importantly, making sure none of your follicles are about to rupture. Right. They need to adjust your dosage of medications as you go along if there's too few or too many growing or too big. So here I am at day five of the injections telling you a little bit about that. This is exactly why I can't be a vlogger because I always forget to do updates and come on and give you more information about something that I was talking about. And I am five days into my injections and I haven't given any kind of update on what's been going on. But that's because it's been pretty uneventful. After that first couple days of getting used to being injected, um, there's really nothing to report. I don't feel any different. I know that my doctor said I could feel very tired and that might happen closer to when I'm getting my surgery, which should be taking place probably next Monday. So not the one, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, somewhere around that date. But that's because of the size of your follicles at that point, which is the purpose of all these injections to make them bigger so that when they go to remove them, they can remove as many as possible. The only thing that's annoying is the way that the injections feel. That's it. For the first minute after each injection, it burns a little bit and then it just goes away. I usually have a tendency of falling asleep afterward, but it also is because we're doing it pretty late at night. We usually don't get to do the injections until like eight or nine o'clock. So I'm pretty tired by then. I work all day long and that's probably why I don't notice any difference in like energy level or anything like that. Plus I'm not working out during this whole procedure. So, you know, I feel pretty much the same as I always have. So that's the update. There is no real update at this point. We're just going through the daily injections and my next appointment is tomorrow morning at 8.30. So by then I will have a better idea of what's going to happen next. So there really was nothing to report. Like we were gonna vlog this and there was nothing happening. Yeah. Like what we just told you was we were still working. We were still doing our everyday stuff. We were normal. So there wasn't anything to really talk about. Yeah, it's pretty easy to keep injecting daily and then get monitored. June 12th, they did do an adjustment to my medication. They actually increased the dosage. So here's my update on that. Okay, so I thought I would give you a really quick update on how I'm feeling, what's been going on, so on and so forth. I went to the doctor this morning. Uh, I just wanted to update anyone who was wondering, but I went to the doctor this morning and they adjusted my medication. So I will post a little chart here of what I need to do going forward. But tonight I'm on the same meds I was on before. I have three injections, um, just like I have, except they're increasing one of my medication dosages so that's where we are right now everything is going perfectly they said everything looks amazing so that's good and now for the bad part now for the negative parts i've been feeling tired today 
more than usual, but then again, I've been doing more than I usually do too, so I don't know. I filmed today, I did a video, I did other videos for other projects I'm working on that are not related to my channel, so I had a lot of stuff going on. I think I filmed for three or four hours altogether. Plus, I did some other work this morning, so I could just be tired. And then we went to Home Depot, we're doing projects around the house. I have someone coming over tomorrow and helping me organize things in the house so we can continue to make this condo our home together. And John is right now building shelves in our closet. That's what he's doing <laughs> as I speak. But the bad part about everything is that my stomach is so sore. And I'm talking about the skin and just the whole situation is not good. This little bruise happened, but otherwise you can't really tell anything else is happening except for that bruise right there. But it's so sore. I think for me being really busy made me forget that I was going through this process, which is how I cope with stress as a person naturally. Like I try to keep myself busy so I don't think about things. I can like get over something quickly or kind of put it out of my mind because I'm super, super engrossed in what I'm doing. Like if I'm doing a case or I'm researching, I can forget that I'm feeling pain. Like things just go by. However, my stomach did start to get really sore. There mm -hmm. were bruises and things like that I remember complaining about. Yeah, there was some tough uh, tissue growing too, I remember. Oh, right. So your stomach can get hard because mm -hmm. it's building up scar tissue inside. So then the needle doesn't go through and he broke a few needles like trying to get it into my skin <laughs> so then we had like these l-shaped needles because they wouldn't go in but yeah we figured that all out stacy ocean rider i hope i'm saying that right ocean rider ocean rider seems like that ocean rider stacy ocean rider asked john this is for you has the mood swings been mild or a bit over the top at times and has communication helped with these intense hormonal changes. And this is just about IVF at this point. I didn't, I'm not speaking for you. You're mm. going to speak, but I personally didn't feel any different in the injection process at all. I felt sore in my stomach and there was stress of the unknown, but you can tell them I didn't feel like I had much of a mood swing. I was just nervous about <clears throat> like the pain and stuff. No, I didn't notice any sort of mood swings, but you know, I think everyone's different, right? The way that you handle all your stress, you think about other things, you do other stuff, we keep ourselves busy, so that stuff isn't looming. But I do think one of the biggest things was your anxiety towards the unknown. Like, is this working? Is this going to hurt me? All these unanswered questions that, you know, we won't know until we get the egg and will it even work? That's probably where my stress came from the most is like, is this going to work? Um, when you start Googling a bunch of side effects, which we're going to talk about some of those, but, you know, you're doing something to your body, so you think, will this, you know, cause cancer in the long run one day? Is this healthy for me? There were nights that I was in bed that my legs started feeling weird, and you can get blood clots during this process. So I was getting really scared of, like, blood clots and stuff. And remember, there was, like, a couple nights where I'm like, I'm feeling something weird. I don't know if, like... <laughs> And if I may, do yourselves a favor in every aspect of life. Do not Google your ailments or <laughs> yeah. what could happen because, yeah, don't do that. That adds to so much stress for her. Mm -hmm. It gets all in her head, and now she suddenly is believing she has blood clots. Right, <laughs> and I couldn't sleep, and then if you don't sleep, you're grouchy in the morning. And I don't want to get too far ahead, but, like, spoiler alert, I am pregnant right now. I'm almost 30, like, I'm closer to the 30-week mark. And I still don't feel like I have, like, mood swings because when people are talking about hormones, it was, like, a comment I got the other day, like, oh, you're getting so sensitive because of your hormones. I'm like, I don't feel, I don't really feel any different hormonally necessarily except for, like, I was getting pimples and stuff because that's a hormonal change. Yeah, I, I would say I don't notice anything, any mood swings with you, but, oh, wait, are we going to, should we go down this road? No, we're not going to no. go down this road yet because we're going to do a video on, you know, how we're doing now. Which will be fun because a lot of people have a lot of questions like, how far along are you? We're going to get there. That's why we're doing this video. Oh, I wanted to talk about you, though, for a minute. Sure. 
because he was just talking about the way that we cope and things like that. I'm very expressive, so I'm gonna tell you if I'm like if I if my if my toe hurts, I'm gonna be like my toe hurts, and I'll. And, and I'll, she says she'll tell me, she'll tell me twenty times. Because right. I'll just be like, oh my toe it hurts still. You know, I'm like letting you know the gauge of where my pain is. But he, on the other hand, <laughs> I okay, will tell you. Once. <laughs> yeah, he'll say it once. So here's here's the problem with two people who are different <laughs> in expressing that. He was sick with COVID. It was it was like end of September. We were at Crime Con and he just mentioned like, Oh, I'm not feeling well. But he was like, Oh, I'm not feeling well. And then I said, Wow, I really feel bad. This sucks. I feel like I'm really sick. And I but he didn't <laughs> to be fair, he didn't. He look didn't her look, dead in the eyes. He didn't Tell look, her that. He, didn't he goes, look So sick. we go into <laughs> Wherever we're going, yep, guess so. It was like the night before our trip, and he was like dying, basically. He was like, oh, my stomach, this, that, the other thing. We didn't know it was COVID yet. So he had all these crazy symptoms, and I'm like, well, I mean, we have to go to Crime Con. So we went to Crime Con. Everything was fine. Fine. I'm doing, like, air quotes. It was fine. But maybe he said it two times, like, I really don't feel well. But he wasn't as vocal or repetitive. So when he said it like twice, days went on. Like life went on. He didn't harp on it. He wasn't being annoying. And I was dragging him all over Universal Studios. <laughs> and he was, we were going on roller coasters and he's probably like. Oh, but I'm the type of person that's not gonna let something stop me from having a good time. Yeah. Tonight, we are going to Halloween Horror Nights. Ooh, I have no voice. But not only that, we are doing something really fun. We're gonna wait to show you. <laughs> Y'all, we nearly died on the last roller coaster we went on. And we got the DVD to We got it. the DVD to <laughs> <laughs> It's that. Look at that thing. You see that up there? It was so fun. It was hot. Dude, was look at that. Look at them people. Oh my Bye. God. There's so many loop-de-loops, you wouldn't even know. Oh, loop -de -loop. But then I realized, because when we got back home, I got COVID, because like, <laughs> obviously he gave it to me or whoever, whatever. And I felt like I was dying. It was my very first time getting it. And I'm never sick. So for me, oh, it was like the end of the world. Like I now understood, I was like, wow, he was feeling really bad. And then I understood, and I did genuinely feel bad. But he's just not a complainer like me. <laughs> So trust me, I think that's one of the things that gets to him because he'll feel bad that he can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, I'm like, can I do anything? You know, what can I do? Nothing. I'm just letting you know. He'll also <laughs> say, like, do we need to go to the emergency room? <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of get, like, annoyed when he says that I'm like, he's, to me, it sounds like he's saying, the little violins are playing. <laughs> he's like, do we need to go to the it's the wee ambulance. Like, I feel like that's what I'm hearing you say, but I, I totally get it. Like, Sometimes he, I'll be sitting there and then I'll hear a blood curdling scream or like, <laughs> ow. I'm like, what's wrong? Nothing. My toe hurts. <laughs> I'm like, ow. Or like, you know, I can't go into like detail about now, but there'll be something happening. So on June 13th, I started my morning injections. So now we added an additional injection, and here is me getting some of those injections. This one is the follow stem done by John. <laughs> here we go. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm not ready. Let me know when you're ready. <sighs> ready? I don't think so. Hey, let me know. I love you. You're going to do great. It ain't going to hurt. It's going to hurt for a little bit. Then you're going to be over it. So we're gonna move on to step three, the gross one. I think we're gonna be done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. I'm scared. Okay, wait. Ready, baby? Baby, okay. baby, 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 ba
I'm, I'm trying, you know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. Can you let go of it and then squeeze it again yep. right before? Okay. And three. Uh, I have to look away first. Okay. Okay. And three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Ow, that one hurt. Where's the thing? Oh Oof. my god, ow. I know. Ow, that one hurt. I don't like doing it at all. Ow. Oh my god. I'm sorry. One more. I appreciated him being patient. And as you could see in those videos, like I would be like, no, don't do it yet. <laughs> and then I'd be like, okay, you can do it. And so that was good having a patient person because. And I'm yeah. trying to get her to do it because the doctor says you need to be on a specific regimen. So it's like, we're, you know, we're an hour behind here. We yeah. Keep it going. Also, um, if you didn't notice in that last video, we were talking about his fingernails, his, his chipped nail polish. I was thinking you looked like, like dirty dollar store doctor. <laughs> But he was clean, and trust me, it was <laughs> fine. But here's another video. It hurts really bad. Y'all, his hands are not dirty. <laughs> his nails make it look slick. Like it <laughs> what do they say about the needles from the thing? It's at the... Here we go. No, 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 so... baby. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. They said the one needle was from... The back. The, the back. Clinic. The back alley. You're the back alley. You're the back alley doctor. Dumpster this doctor. is the back alley dumpster doctor. <laughs> so we made a lot of jokes about like how we were setting things up and it was just all in good fun for us. We really did know what we were doing and things were sanitized and it wasn't a big deal. But we're just funny people and we had to, you know, just get through it like Laugh that. Laugh through the pain. Yeah. <laughs> And I thought it was funny that we were putting, <laughs> we were putting, he would like put the paper towel on after it. <laughs> anyway, but I'm going to tell you now that I learned a lot from the process. And one of you asked, what symptoms did I experience during this process? And again, I will repeat that there wasn't many like physical symptoms, not for me. Like I said, there was those two nights Two or three nights where I just felt like, oh my gosh, my heart is beating fast. I mean, which could have been true, but... I think it, that might have just been your anxiety. It could have been my anxiety, exactly. But that doesn't mean that you won't feel sick or nauseous. But I don't have those feelings on a regular basis. So if you already are the type of person that gets an upset stomach or, you know, has headaches, then you might be in... You might be in store for not so good feelings. One of my best friends actually came into town during this process, her, her boyfriend, and her two kids, because we have birthdays close together. So they came and we actually went to Disneyland on the 17th. So this just shows you there wasn't any real physical symptoms. Like we were, I was completely normal. We went to Disney for the day. We had a great time. We walked around, we had drinks, we had great food. I think it was actually good to take my mind mm -hmm. off of what was going on. So I actually highly recommend you continue your life like don't necessarily sit at home unless your doctor is like oh you have to be on bed rest something happened to you but i want to talk about the night that my friends were still in town and we had to do a very the most important a very important shot it's called the trigger shot it was supposed to happen the next day on the 18th at 9 p.m on the dot and my doctor said so many times 9 p.m on the dot and i was like okay so we had to mix it up we put it in the fridge it was a big one put it in the fridge and we we're like okay tonight is the trigger shot and what what it does is it triggers your ovulation so we have been giving me shots that prevent me from ovulating because what you don't want to happen is ovulate now when we're not ready to retrieve the eggs so these shots tonight actually make me ovulate and then the retrieval will be in the next 34 hours after. So that's how they plan it. And the crazy part is this shot has to be administered at exactly the right time. So exactly nine o'clock tonight, you can't delay. You just have to take it exactly at the time. And I've heard it hurts really bad. So I'm not looking forward to it, but I am going to go visit a friend today with John. We're gonna go to Long Beach and hang out for a while and then come back and settle in 
and then administer the injection. So right after that, um, I don't do anything on Monday. Monday, I basically rest and then hopefully, because I have 14 follicles right now, but only about six of those looked like mature enough for retrieval, but we don't know that until they actually get out. But fingers crossed that we, you know, get a good amount so that, you know, we have more chances to have a baby later on. We actually decided to go out. We probably shouldn't have, but we drove about an hour all the way to Long Beach. We had pizza, we had drinks, we were, you know, having a great time with our friends. And then me and the boyfriend were like, hey, let's go take a walk to the beach. It's right down the street. Don't worry, baby. <laughs> we'll be back in no time. We decide to leave our phones. Why do we leave our phones? I don't know. But he got his kid. We go down to the beach and we're just enjoying talking, hanging out by the water. Time is going by and I get the feeling we should probably get you back. Did. And he's like... Oh, okay, kid's still playing a little bit. You might have to wait a little longer. All right, that's fine. I was freaking out. Me and Valerie were freaking out because she knows she's a nurse. So like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to trigger my ovulation. Like if this doesn't work, you know, we spent our money on this. We have to do the time. So she's like frantically trying to figure out their phones are going off like in the house. And we're like, oh my gosh. So finally we were like, no, I said, I got to get an Uber. I'm going to have to give myself this shot. I'm going to take an Uber home <laughs> because the time was going by and we wanted ample time home so we could relax, get the medicine ready. And so we walked out and tried to find them. We were going on every street, we were calling their names, and then finally we found you guys. Yeah, we were walking back. Yeah, they were already walking back, but it was fine, everything. She was mad. I was she like, She thought babe. she was gonna lose it. I didn't get mad, well, I was upset. I was like, babe, I almost took no, an Uber like home. No, not like really mad, but. No, I was just like, babe, we gotta go. I must took an Uber all the way home, and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And it was getting close. And I knew in my mind, we got this. We got this. Yeah, we got home a half an hour before we needed to do right. it, which was kind of cutting it We for could sure. have gotten in traffic. <laughs> oh, like, we yeah. do live in L.A. <laughs> so I was like, Ooh. But we had another question. A. Patterson 5449 asked some questions that we will get to a little bit later because some of these were about how many tries did it take, etc. But they also wanted to know how the process affected us mentally and this is for both of us so i think for me i tuned it out i was just like taking it a day at a time so i didn't really like mentally it wasn't other than feeling the uncertainty and the anxiety i didn't feel that affected especially because i still had to work and everything yeah the process was pretty easy for me just you know feeling bad about stabbing her every day but i think one of the biggest things is like don't put all your eggs into a basket about how anything's gonna turn out. Just understand it's a gamble and, you know, roll with the punches. Yeah, that's probably one of my biggest pieces of advice is like you gotta go into this knowing it's a calculated risk you're taking, but there's no guarantee. And we knew that, and that's that's the gamble you take. You're like, we know, but it's better t like to try and, you know, fail, I guess, than not even try it all and never know. Mm -hmm. But on the 18th, we did the stimulation injection. Like I said, we talked about this already. We came home, got comfortable, did the injection. And the whole idea, you have to actually, this doesn't make sense, but just bear with me. You have to take a pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. If the pregnancy test is positive, you go forward with the um, retrieval. If it's negative, it didn't work. So the whole process has to start over again. So you can see the stress of me being like, babe, we had to do this, we had to get back. So then we had to do a scan. And that was our final scan. And they they found 14 follicles that day. But they, but they said on that little graph that we showed you, only six of them were mature enough to be retrieved. So even though all of them grew, they only, like only six of them were mature. Naturally, that doesn't necessarily mean that an egg will come out of the follicle. The doctors can only retrieve it because it's large enough to get their tools in there. But naturally, who knows how many eggs could have been delivered. Right. So they gave us an estimate of two or three. That's it. And it was a little bit disappointing, but I was like, you know, two or three is great because then it's two or three chances of being able to get pregnant in the future. Then, like he had mentioned, I had to take a medication to prevent overstimulation 
and that's really important. So I'm going to show you a video of me talking about that. There is another medication I have to take on Monday, and that is to prevent um, overstimulation because if you have, I think it's like hyper, I forgot what it's called, but it's like an overstimulation of your ovaries and it's actually really, really bad and it can be fatal, but that's very rare. But they give you this medicine that you actually um, don't swallow. You you kind of just, you know, you stick it in, you stick it in, but not in the back, in the front, in the actual place, you know, all the magic happens, um, your vagina. So it's <laughs> vaginal insertion and the pill goes in and it helps to prevent overstimulation so that you don't experience any kind of like life-threatening issues. However, you do need to monitor all of your symptoms because, you know, getting blood clots is very common. Not like very common. It is a um, possibility, but not common. So it's not common, but it's a possibility. So that's scary. And also after the surgery, blood clots are still a thing. For like a month, you need to be monitoring your body and making sure you don't have like burning in your legs or trouble breathing because that can kill you. So that's really scary. But I'm scared of everything because that's the kind of person I am. I don't really like taking a lot of risks, but but some would say this whole procedure is kind of a risk and it is. And I feel like it's more of a calculated risk and you have doctors monitoring you so everything should be okay and then um i think that's it as far as any medications are concerned this would be my last night doing injections so finally it was time for the retrieval on june 20th early in the morning john had to be on standby in the office because as soon as they get the eggs he has to give his sperm sample so that they can introduce the sperm to them as soon as possible. Here's me explaining what we were doing that morning on our way there. Okay, today's the day. We are on our way to my appointment. I have to be there between like 6, 6.15 to check in, get ready, and then the anesthesiologist will come in and I will go for a nap. <laughs> and the world will go on while I'm napping retrieve as many eggs as possible. I did get a doctor switch last night, was which was a little bit of a mm -hmm. shock. And about donating sperm, you can't Donating? Wait, right? Donating it? What do we call it? You're donating it to me? Of course. <laughs> Charity bank. <laughs> <laughs> um, Retrieving sperm? No. Um, What do you call it? Donating sperm? No. Expending? <laughs> Collecting. Collecting sperm. Yeah. On the collecting of my sperm, the doctors will tell you to not wait so long, but wait like two, three days because sperm will go bad if it sits. Yeah, this was actually really important. So you would think, oh, if I don't ejaculate, like I'll have more sperm because that it kind of is true. What well, is true? But, but the sperms themselves are not fresh. So they're like dead. <laughs> They're like dirty sperm. <laughs> they don't work as well. So you have to kind of time it. So I think they said like wait a day or something. And it's kind of crazy how many sperm is actually abnormal or not properly yeah. functioning. Yeah, because there's just so many of them anyway. So yeah. anyway. But let's talk about that little thing I mentioned about the doctor switch the night before my surgery. I get an email and... The gist of it is that, oh, I'm so sorry, um, I have to go away, something came up, I'm not going to be doing a retrieval. And this is a doctor that I've been talking to since November, it is now June, I am literally going into my surgery, which has been planned, they gave me the date, and then they were just like, I won't be there. And remember, she's been talking to this doctor via email. I've never even met her in person yet, mm -hmm. which is one of our biggest complaints is that it just felt really impersonal, which is why... In the end of this, we had a lot of thoughts and feelings about kind body, but we'll get into that. So the night before, I find out I'm getting a new doctor. They give me the name of that doctor. I go and Google her, and I'm like, you know what? She looks like she's great. You know, I don't know the difference in their expertise, or it just seemed fine. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to rest assured that everything's going to go fine. I mean, so, what other choice do you have, right? I didn't. So yeah. I was like, eh. I mean, I got it. What am I going to do? I have no choice. Here's a video of me that morning. When we went in, and like I was saying before, this is a very pretty place. 
aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So here's that video. Isn't it so pretty in here? I love like the entire design of this place. It's so pretty and comfortable. After I got in, I got undressed. They put me in scrubs or like, um, yeah, it was like scrubs or something. And then I met with my new doctor. She was really nice. She explained what was gonna happen, that an anesthesiologist was gonna come in. I was gonna sign some documents, basically saying that if anything happens to me. Tough. Too bad, which is, I don't like, I don't like going through those documents, but she's like, that's gonna happen and then we'll wheel you in and you know, we'll get you set up and give you the IV and you'll wake up and before you know it, everything will be done. So I'm like, great. So a nurse came in, she did my IV. I do not like having IV done. Ugh, I just don't like having it done. And then yes, the anesthesiologist came in and he was like, do you want me to go over everything that can happen? And I was like, yeah. So he was kind of like surprised I wanted to hear everything, but I was like, no, I need to. I need to know everything. I want to be very informed. So he talked about all the things that could go wrong, which is not, it's things like brain damage, you know, paralyzation, death, not things you want to hear, especially when you're about to go under surgery, but they have to do this because you have to be in the right mindset and sign that paper right then and there. You can't sign in a week before this. So I signed it, I went in, I get into the surgery suite. It probably takes some 10 minutes to get me in place. And here I am right when I came out of surgery with my dry mouth and everything. I am done. Got some orange juice. Didn't feel a thing. I feel so relaxed. Yeah. It went really well. It went well, it was so easy, I'm done. It's like 45 minutes later. It's crazy. At least they gave you a juice box. They did. They give me juice and crackers and they get, it's funny because they give you your phone back right away. They're like, here's your phone. And it's just funny because it's like the first thing they give you because they know you're going to want to talk to your family. You're going to want to talk to your partner. You definitely feel tired as hell because you were just asleep. So it only took about 45 minutes. Yeah. I got dressed and by the time I was in the car, I was just hungry and like ready to just find out what happened next. The great thing is we got to find out that day before we left how many eggs they were able to retrieve. Yeah. And that was really exciting because we got 11. We were expecting to get like five and we ended up getting 11 and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Here's the problem with this. If I were not gonna be doing embryos, I could have frozen all those 11 eggs. And then later, down the line, we could have taken one of those eggs and done them one by one. Like fertilize one, see what happens. Oh, didn't work, we'll do another one. So that could have been a not a better process, but it's just a different option. Like you could do this process and freeze 30 eggs and then later on try to fertilize them and have all those chances. But that's not what we were doing. Now we had to wait until the next day after the sperm and the eggs go together, they tell us how many fertilized. Right, because you know you could have had the option to freeze the eggs and, and find out later, but we essentially just bypassed that freezing stage. We're like, no, let's just make embryos now. Yeah, because it's, a, it's another step you have to do in this process later on. And more money. Yeah, so XOX0603 XOX asked, well, they said that they felt miserable. They were emotional. They did it a couple of times. They had stomach aches the first time, and then she did it again the second time, and it was better, and now she's ready to do it a third time. So it looks like both of the times she did it did not work, so I'm really sorry for that. That's just, it's so frustrating, this process, and I just want to say, like, expect it. What you're saying is the first time you might have been really anxious and stressed, and sometimes, and, and everyone, and everyone, stress ends up in, feeling in different ways in your body. So maybe that was your stress mm -hmm. formulating some way in that way. And then the second time you did it better because you knew what was expecting and now you're ready for the third, still even better. I'm curious to know how the third one went for you. And they asked how we felt through the whole process and how, we've, how we stayed stress-free. And I honestly think it's because we work so much because we had so many other fires to put out, things to think about, personal life, family things. I mean, my right. sister was coming to visit. Like we had 
all these other things going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to dwell on a process that you're doing. You just have to trust in the process. That's why you're paying all the money and the doctors. Like, why should we worry about something that we can't control? Exactly. But I think it was harder after my surgery. I was really sore. Um, it kind of felt like PMS. It kind of felt like cramps. And then the very next day, we found out that we had five embryos that matured. So that was exciting. But now you have to wait five to seven days for the embryo to form because, you know, now it's just, it was just an egg. The embryos were starting. Like you can see the cells, they split and they become an embryo. So we had to wait for that. And that was probably the hardest part. It's just waiting and trying to get your mind off of it. And several people asked what the hardest part was. And that is, for me, that was one of the hardest parts. Like, Just because they're embryos doesn't mean they're going to survive. And that's why it's the hardest part, because they keep giving you little bits of joy, and then you never know if it's just going to fail. Exactly. Stacey Ochenreiter asked again, what is the hardest part of the whole process for each of you? Like, as a whole, I think you're going to find out in one second. The results. <laughs> yeah. So someone else asked, um, what were we the most excited for? And I think... The we results. Were, yeah, the same thing. <laughs> like, that's the letdown and also the, like, what brings you up. And at this point, we were excited to know how many of the five fertilized became embryos. And we finally found out after a week that only two of them became embryos. And we only had two chances to have a baby in the future right. if... And even at that point, you may want a girl or a boy, and you don't know what they are yet. So. No, they did tell us that day. Right, but I'm saying, like, as they're embryos, so right. you don't know if they're two girls, two boys. So it was a little bit disappointing that we only got two, but I was still grateful because I'm like, that's two chances. Yep. And then we also was, <laughs> we were also a little bit disappointed because in my mind, I had had a vision of I wanted to have at least three male embryos. And, like, two female. You know, just, a, like, a mixture of embryos that we could bank for later. And that day we found out the gender, and it was two XX chromosomes. So it was two female embryos. So we had the, like, gender disappointment for a minute. But then we realized, you know what? Okay, fine. You know, this is what we're going to do. And we even said in that moment, like, we'll do this again, and we'll get more. Because at this point, we were still very hopeful and excited. So I already have a daughter, as most of you know, and I really wanted like a mini John because you're so cute. So I was like, I wanted a mini John. And then when I realized I only had two female embryos, I was like a little bit disappointed, but still happy. But now comes the even harder part, the genetic testing, where you find out if they're even viable. And I remember it was July 4th. We went out with friends, like barbecue, street parties. We were waiting for the news, and we were so excited. We were telling everybody about it. We're like, we have two girls, and we're going to freeze two girls. And, you know, because it was fun. And we were just like, wow, we're so grateful for this. Especially we're so excited because we had done genetic testing on ourselves to see if we have any negative matches, any diseases or something that we could pass off to each other. And we were clean. You mean pass off to our baby? Yeah, right. pass up from each other. Yeah, we're not going to I mean, we also had to do STD tests and whatnot, yeah. but we weren't passing anything to each other. But we did do those, and we were just—that was the furthest thing from our mind. Right. we were like, we did genetic testing, like, and nothing's going to be wrong. But we got the results July 5th, and I remember this. We, it, like, we were on speaker, and I was excited. I was like, okay, so tell us, like, you know. And they were like, we're sorry, but we had to discard both of them. And I was like, hmm? what do you mean? And they were like, yeah, they were genetically abnormal. You'll get your results. And then I had to, like, wait. And I opened up my email, and I got the results. And I'll put them up on the screen. But they both had trisomy disorders. So they discarded both of them. And I recall posting this on my story because I was devastated. I was, like, heartbroken. I was more shocked. Like, my feelings were, what? Right, because we had gotten tested and— thought there's we're not going to pass anything down to our baby i was like how could they have this but then as i researched I've, i i realized a lot of things and one of the things i realized was you know embryology itself is an entire skill 
And it's an entire part of medicine that is a specialty, and these people have to be very well trained, and that's like a very delicate process of this process. So that was my first thought is like, wait a minute, whoever's creating these embryos in the lab, you know, who are they? What company is it? And then we found out it's Kind Body doing like the entire process, and then it, I was a little taken aback by it because I was like, well, wait a minute. I mean, they could tell us anything they wanted, not saying they did, but it made me a little bit apprehensive that there wasn't a third-party laboratory specializing in that, that didn't sit well with me. I realized like, I don't know about this, but then of course our doctor talked to us and they explained, and this is also true, women get pregnant all the time and they don't even know it. So your your body will do what science just did, sperm and egg meet, it gets fertilized, but then it, it dies off because it knows that it has something that's not right. Now, some of those do still go all the way and that's why there are children born with trisomy disorders and whatnot, but usually your body discards those on its own and you never even take a pregnancy test because you're not expecting to be pregnant and it never even comes up. So they tried to explain to us the statistics and it's actually really common, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So the more embryos you get, that's why it's important to do this younger because there are people who get 30. Yeah. And then out of the 30, it's a numbers game. So maybe two of them will be abnormal, but the rest will be fine. I think what I've learned is that everything's going to decrease divisible by two. So if you have 10 eggs, you'll get five embryos. Two of those will be good. Maybe one will survive. It is. It's a numbers game. And Jen Lynn Hurd asked, what kept you positive during the whole process? And will you consider going through IVF a second time? And what kept me positive was that after I did my research, I was aware that it usually doesn't happen on your first try because your body is being awakened. You're, you know, you're you're getting stimulated and now your body, if you've been pregnant before, your body's remembering what it felt like because you're essentially getting pregnant. Like the, all those medications you're taking, everything, it's like, it's trying to mimic you being fertile and ovulating and getting pregnant. So you're kind of awakening your body. So I've read a lot about it and I wasn't being diligent on my vitamins. We weren't being diligent on the time we were doing it. I hadn't been off birth control a longer amount of time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay positive because I'm reading a lot of success stories. And then I read the book, It Starts With the Egg, which I highly recommend. I'm going to leave it below. And that is when I decided to change some of the things I was doing. But I'm going to be honest, right away we were like, you know what? We just did this. Let's just try it again because we were already in the mindset. And looking back, though— I don't think we should have done that. Mm -hmm. It was way too rushed, and we didn't wait at all. Like, we waited, like, a week. Right, because one of the biggest problems is, like I was mentioning earlier, is your follicles growing, and that's when you have to stop the process. When they get to a certain diameter, you need to stop the process. So I think if we waited longer, let the body acclimate more to the medicine, let the follicles cool down, and instead of rushing right into it, those follicles grew really quickly. We're going to save what happened next to part three. I'm hoping that you're gonna follow along because there's just a lot to the next process. But we decided, I talked to him and I'm like, you know what, let's just, I talked to my doctor first and my doctor was like, well, we can try a different cycle start. So I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong, luthiel? Luthiel? Yeah, yeah. Luthiel? It's one of those. But she's like, we can try this other cycle start which happens soon. So it was like in two weeks or something, like it happens soon. it was one week. It was so fast. So I said, okay, are we ready to do this? But since we've already, we had already been through so much and I'm like, I'm already in the mindset. And that's really important for me. If I get out of the mindset and then have to get back into it, I just, I lose it. I lose the momentum. So spoiler alert, we decide to try a different cycle start the second time. I end up doing a lot of things different. I was like detoxing from certain things. I wasn't using a lot of my cosmetics. I was staying away from plastic, but stay tuned because we have a lot in that next video because that is when we made positive changes. I feel like yeah. we made a lot of positive changes, but uh, you already know if you've been following me, I am pregnant right now, so stay tuned. We don't want to tell you too much. We have a lot going on right now as well, so we're trying to get these videos out. ASAP. As <laughs> we are, but you know.
things happen. But thank you so much for asking us all these questions and caring yeah. about our story. And if you want to know more, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. We will see you in our next video. Bye.